Welcome back to We Move Through Stormy Weather, a fish podcast by Storm Sound and Osiris Media. My name is Ryan Storm, and today I'm joined by Colin O'Brien. Colin started playing drums at an early age, but has been a huge music fan all his life. He moved to Chicago after high school and eventually connected with Neil Francis, who he still plays with today as part of his energetic touring band. Hi, Colin. How are you? Pretty good, Ryan. How are you doing? Fantastic. Thank you so much for being on today. Very excited uh, to talk some fish with you. I know we, we met uh, last month when you guys were playing in Toronto, which was an incredible, incredible show. Uh, and I'm very happy we were able to um, connect over, uh, you know, fish. And uh, I'm excited to do this episode. Yeah, me too. I've been looking forward to it. It's, mm-hmm. it's uh, not as often as I'd want that I get to nerd out about fish with someone. So Awesome. <laughs> yeah. awesome. Well, b- before we dive into... Um, today's pick uh or today's song pick um and our favorite versions of said pick um tell me a little bit about how you got into your uh, how you got into fish uh your background with the band and whatnot yeah for sure um i have an older brother he's four years older than me and uh i was always like stealing his cds and stuff uh back in like elementary school and um i was actually out uh, i was at summer camp uh in like mm. third grade i think i was like nine or something and uh i was there for like a week but uh my fam sent my family sent this little like uh this little like care box. package yeah a yeah. little care package yeah and so there was like a nice note some candy and stuff but then uh my brother sent billy breathes because I, I had my walk van mm-hmm. so i was at summer camp in Nuego, michigan uh, i was like right next to this lake and these woods it's beautiful area and I started listening to Billy Breeze and it was just like it was really really profound it it was felt like the right place and time to be hearing it and uh all the songs were new and like I was just like what is this you know Mm -hmm. it it was it was really just like kind of like captivating me um so I listened to like Studio Fish for a while after that I got like Punta and then at one point, uh, I remember my brother was like washing his car in a, in the driveway and he was listening to, I think it was, I think it was Live Fish like 14 or something. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong on that, but he was listening to this live down with disease and like right when like, you know, the jam starts and Trey's playing that like really like uplifting positive melody, I was just like, whoa, like that's Fish too. And that started my my fandom right there. So it was pretty early on. It was, uh, you know, between like elementary and middle school. I was just diving in. Yeah. Nice. And when was your first show? My first show was in 2009 at uh, Deer Creek. I did the two nights at Deer Creek and two nights at Alpine. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Oh, it was a blast. I was like, I was with a lot of my high school friends from Michigan and a bunch of my friends that I uh, just met at college. I was like a freshman in college that year. Um, So it was like a cool meeting of groups. And Mm -hmm. I remember it rained like super hard the first night. Like there was a big storm that came through and I woke up the morning after the next show and like me and my two friends were all on this air mattress, <laughs> like one big air mattress in in the tent. And the tent was like the tent had like f- like three inches of water in it. <laughs> so like, oh my god, we were all we were all sleeping on the air mattress with our feet on top of the cooler. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so like we could stay dry, and it was just like it was did it so work. Fun. It did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we were go. all we were all dry in the morning, but uh, it was just like all right, we're we're out here, we're we're doing this. Uh, Round two tonight. <laughs> and I love it. That, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And so you picked Stash uh, for your song today that we're going to discuss, which is awesome. Uh, this is the second We Move Through Stormy Weather episode with Stash. Uh, if anybody listening would like to hear more about Stash, uh, I talked to uh, Scott Marks about it last year. Um, great episode there. We talked about the Amsterdam Stash and oh, the yeah. Shoreline 2021 uh, versions, which are both excellent. And also with this stash there's kind of an interesting twist in this episode today because i kind of broke from my normal form i i usually pick a a 3.0 or modern era version of the song that we're talking about um but i felt ba- based on the one that you picked i felt that there wasn't really you know there's obviously a small pool of noteworthy 3.0 stash versions anyway 
Um, but I felt that there wasn't one that could really stack up to your pick at all. So I went a different route uh, and I picked a 1.0 stash, which I, I don't, off the top of my head, that might be the first time I've ever done this, um, which is really interesting. Um, but tell me about why you picked stash today. Uh, I picked this one. I'm, I love the 1.0 uh, sounds and like the energy that they were playing with back then. Mm. Um, I mean, I'm a huge 3.0 fan and, and two as well, but uh, I think naturally when I like go to listen to a show, I'll, I'll pick a 1.0 that I haven't heard quite yet or, uh, you know, I'll work through like a tour or whatever. But yeah. this, this one I picked because there was a night I was on the road with Neil and uh, I think we were coming back from Denver. We were on I-80. Uh, you know, it's a long, long stretch of highway. There's like no turns. There's not too much to see. Uh, and I was, I was driving the late shift. Uh, so it was probably like two, three in the morning. We were just trying to like get back to Chicago. And mm -hmm. at this point in the drive, like the coffee kind of stops working. You're like really caffeinated and like awake, but like, you know, you're kind of getting like a corpse. Like, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're like, just you're, like, you're not alive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're like, you're on, you're on autopilot, so to speak. Mm. Um, so everyone was sleeping besides Jack, our tour manager. Uh, and I, I was like, all right, there's always a point in the drive where I'm like, I'm going to throw some fish on. And yeah, some of the members of the band are like, yeah, okay, cool. And some are just like, oh, kind of like roll their eyes or put their headphones on. Um, <laughs> But uh, so I, I was just going through Spotify at a gas station. And I, I just looked at this set list and I was like, whoa, that looks pretty wild. So I threw yeah. it on. And as the like, you know, the entirety of, of the stash is like 40 minutes or something. Right. This is uh, the, this is the uh, 1114 Orlando stash. Yes. Yes. Wondering. Yes. Uh, as it goes on, it just like descends into madness. It it's got like all the elements of um uh, of Fish's improvising that I really love. It's like really playful at times. It gets like really dark and and scary at times. And then like it'll just go any direction. Like I've, I I could tell they were just like so present and and having fun. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, when you asked out that, that I was like, I was like, I think my most recent like awesome fish listening moment was, was that awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's a, it's a crazy, crazy ride. This like 40 minutes uh, of stash it's, it's, you know, it's, it's very emblematic of kind of 1995 to uh, you know, where, where the band was at the time and it being really experimental um, with a lot of things. This actually, I feel like this stash would fit really well in like something like fall 94 as well. Um, yeah yeah totally. you know 95 at this point at least you know that they, they're two weeks away from one of the best months in their career um so you know it, it's interesting to hear kind of how you know you can hear the beginnings of the december 95 sound but they're not quite there yet like i feel like december 95 is a bit more cohesive um yeah. than this stash ends up being like in this there's a lot of like I mean, I like I don't even know what the hell is going on in, in some places, right? Like I, I this admittedly this kind of jamming isn't my favorite thing that Fish does, like the crazy dissonance off the wall stuff. So I, I hadn't heard um, this stash in a little while, but I listened to it this morning before we recorded, and I was just like, man, this is crazy. So it, yeah, it's, it's what's so crazy to me is also like it doesn't go that far from stash proper for a while like the whole yeah. first stash like, track the first 15 minutes is just really good stash like mm -hmm. really good tension building um which is amazing you know I, I i know as a drummer i assume you're you're zeroing in on on fishman throughout a lot of this yeah totally uh i mean you know fishman's who i'm drawn to first but uh but it's also like like trays like i took some notes one second <laughs> yes <laughs> um just like in like the second verse of stash like right off the bat they just get really quiet like yeah it it, be, it could be like they 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 really like bring everything down and it mm -hmm. gets like really intricate and like which which was so weird too because they come out of the gate hot 
Like yeah. they, they start yeah. the song, it's fast, it's like aggressive, and then 15 seconds later, it's like it's like, whoosh, whoosh. It's like yeah, re- really tiny playing, and and I'm hearing, uh, yeah, I'm listening to Fishman a lot, but I'm hearing all like the percussiveness of the rest of the band and how mm-hmm. like they're like literally bouncing off each other. And uh, I wrote they were finishing each other's sandwiches, but I think I meant sentences. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Never make notes on jams when you're hungry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's so cool. And then and then the way that you know they kind of just like like make a hard left turn into Manteca, you know, at, at the 15 minute mark of this whole thing. Like you know, suddenly they're you know they go from this big stash peak, um, and then it just kind of like fades out a little bit. It fades out like Fishman goes to like the a lot of like wood blocks and cowbells. Yeah. Like not a lot of like snare or toms or cymbals. So it breaks down to that. And then I don't know if Trey had his little percussion rig set up. He did, yeah. Okay, yeah. I think he hops on percussion mm-hmm. and that like ends up like culminating in like Manteca. Yeah. Which so I, I don't know if like Trey turned to Fishman and was like, do this because F- Fishman is the first one to make the pivot into the Manteca. And actually in, in hindsight, there, there's video of this stash on YouTube um, that was released, I think with this live fish thing. Uh, it was like the, the single cam soundboard um, of this whole stash. So I, I'm after we record, I'm going to go and look at that to see if there's like any sort of communication between the two of them before the Manteca um, right. pivot. Or- or if it was just like they all felt it, they were just like, "Yeah, like, let's, let's do it." But it, it's so interesting because Fishman has, you know, was so tightly holding on to that like stash hi hat thing, like that uh-huh. constant uh, hi hat, and then at the Manteca, obviously he goes into the Manteca, but then he kind of dips back into stash at times, like briefly, like around a minute and a half into the Manteca thing, he goes back into stash, yeah, but then he's back into like you know, hammering the toms and stuff. So th- th- this part of the jam was really the fish show. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like this whole stash, as you said before, it's like, they don't deviate like too far from stash. It's like stash is always like this line, but they're like, whoop, whoop, whoop. They're kind of like just dancing like around it, like within it. Right. Uh, I Yeah. I think it's like beautiful playing. Um, mm. and, then, and then they get into like the, the weird, like, I mean, first of all, they're in the Manteca for like, I don't know, eight, nine minutes. And then, or sorry, they're in the Manteca for like five minutes. And then yeah. it kind of disintegrates into this thing where, and then Fishman starts doing the hi-hat again, but it, it could also be like the Bowie intro. Right. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're like, like in a vacuum, they're like that- droning and like creating like more like soundscape of Fishman's like keeping the hi-hat going. Mm-hmm. So it's like one of those sort of like launch points where it's like, oh, are they going to like really go into something else or like, yeah. but they just stay, they just like stay there and that, like that, like, yeah, it just kind of like builds into madness. <laughs> yeah. And like, like just an, an angry cloud at like the 10 minute mark, my, my note was just angry cloud in all yep. caps, um, which, which is so like, it, it's so cool listening to this um, because you know, you have that for a couple of minutes and then like, and then everything's just gone Yeah, briefly. Like, you know, and then it's just like Trey doing some weird stuff. And then I don't know if it's Trey on the percussion kit or, or Fishman doing that, like, like a clock ticking yeah. kit on like a cowbell. Yep. It's like wood black and cowbell. I think it's just Fishman, but I love that part because you can hear all the people in the front road, just like losing it, just like yeah. freaking out. They're like, whoa, like, play Reba like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> like i i love listening to the old shows uh to hear some of that too it's like it's like yeah i've you know i've i'm i'm like we've all been like that stoked at a show and yeah it's cool to have that little uh that little bit captured yeah 100 percent. and then and then the way that dog foot dog face boy happens out of this like yeah wild out of nowhere it's like it's it's a completely different arrangement mm-hmm. uh, from Dog Face Boy. I mean, musically, I think I don't know. I I only play drums, so I have a poor melodic sense. But <laughs> uh, but I feel like it's still like that, like minor drone. It's it's like dark, mm-hmm. but then they're singing Dog Face Boy over it, which is yeah. 
And and then there's like also like you know Fishman's doing like these kind of unsettling sounding snare rolls. Yeah. yeah, like throughout the beginning of it, and then like you know after like two minutes of like just vocals, then like Paige plays some piano briefly, and then it, it, then you get like the real angry cloud. Like the yeah. other one was just like an appetizer. Like then then I have a note around like just after the three minute mark, like rip to anybody tripping at that show like yeah, that exactly that's the kind of thing where you're like hiding under your seat um <laughs> yeah like, you're like in fear <laughs> yeah you're like am i okay am i gonna no. be okay like no not yet <laughs> and then it's just like this thing is like two minutes of just or like sorry like three four minutes i don't know of just like death sounding yeah just like craziness darkness drone wash i mean the angry storm it's yeah. true. And before that, it's just like the storm is like bubbling in the distance. And then it's just like, okay, now it's like washing over you. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, crazy. Trey's coming in with like the like psycho, like ascending like sirens, the like, woo, woo, you know? Yeah. It's, un it's unsettling, but uh, I think it's, I think it's incredible that like within one song, they went all these places and then it just like, they're like, it's time to just like, completely dissipate and like, yeah and then they bring it home at the end like yeah. you know the, the cloud gradually kind of dies out and then trey's just like all right stash again yeah but what's interesting to me is i i would have expected them especially in fall 95 to kind of like you know build stash up again for another few minutes like hit a really huge peak but they just kind of like it just tapers off it just like they, they go back to stash and then they they end it like there's not really a big <laughs> big ending which, which which i found very interesting yep yeah, totally. I mean, yeah, it just, it tapers off. I mean, maybe energetically, they were just like, whoa, what the what yeah, like hell it, just happened? Need a minute. Like, we're just going to get yeah, through this. Totally. Take a break. And then Strange Design is right after, which I think is just like, as Fish does, you know, they'll they'll bring you through the storm and then, yeah. and then like the clouds will clear. You'll have like a palate cleanser, kind of like come back to earth. Right. You know, um, and that's right before I, I think, yems right after that and that's a insane 20 minute yem uh and they play immigrant song in that so it's like there's still a lot of like yeah there's still a lot of like firepower in the set yeah they, they needed a breather though you could tell like that i mean that that kind of jamming is is probably like nuts to to play yeah it's that gotta be crazy. gotta be intense yeah and um, then so my pick uh yes. that i went with um has some similarities but it's very different i went with the island tour version uh, yeah for 298 um, I've always really liked this one. Um, you know, kind of still has that like really good first, you know, 10 to 12 minutes where it's like they're playing stash. Um, and it could have ended at after like the first 10 to 12 minutes when they hit that huge stash peak. And that's that, you know, that could be it. But Trey instead, like at, at like 12 minutes and 45 seconds, once they've kind of wrapped up stash, I, I, I described it as he starts looping and body checks the jam sideways into like an angry space. And that's, you know, Island Tour is still basically Fall 97 Fish. And so yeah. this is the kind of thing that he would do all the time in that era, right? Like he would just be like, all right, like, <laughs> fuck whatever we're doing right now. We're going this way. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then, you know, a more angry stuff, but it's a different kind of angry space than we saw in Fall 95, which is so interesting. Definitely. I think um i think your stash pick from island tour is like one of the great examples of of fish's uh ability to to harness like tension and release because mm -hmm. for me i was like listening to it and i was just like you know like it keeps building there's so much tension and it's it, it's getting more intense and stuff and and trey's just like you know, building up this like anticipation of like a release of that tension. Mm -hmm. and, and then he just keeps saying no. He's like, nope, we're gonna like and go further. And it's just yeah, like keep going. It's another one of those moments like the dark, angry storm. You're like, mm -hmm. oh my God, <laughs> am I okay? Is yeah, this okay? it's like <laughs> it's like you're like holding your breath for five minutes in this jam. Like yeah. when they finally hit the peak at like eleven and a half minutes, it's like, oh, like <gasps> I didn't realize I was holding my breath, but like, right. I just yeah. exhaled for the first time in five minutes. Like, <laughs> yeah, totally. And uh, yeah, it was wild. It's like, it's, a, it's like a little like anxiety, like inducing, inducing yeah. a little bit, you know, you're just like, uh, but then, um, 
but I I forget the the time mark, but like when mm. it finally does break, yeah, it goes into like the most beautiful, like serene, yeah, like, which atmospheric, is atmospheric, like yeah, light. It is just like like I was listening to it, and like when when it like broke into that, I was literally just like, oh wow, like yeah, this is really good. Yeah, yeah you can just like s- sit back into it and like enjoy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's it's cool because it's also kind of an abrupt shift. Like Trey, you know, as I said, he body checks them into this angry space again. And then like a minute later, it's like, okay, um, actually we're going to do this major key thing now. Um, yep. And, you know, Paige just comes in with the roads and it's just beautiful. <laughs> like I, I, I like, I, I love, I love this kind of thing. Like, you know, he, Paige kind of hangs back for the first little bit and then he just comes in with these big sweeping chords as he does um, just underneath what Trey's doing. And man, it's, it's amazing. It's beautiful. And, um, uh, and also Mike is a lot more present in this jam than he is in 11, 14, 95. Yes. Like, yeah. I mean, that's, that's a lot to do with the difference in how the band was improvising in the, in the two times. And obviously people for a louder Mike, uh, going into 97 helped a lot yeah. with that. Like he, you know, he's much more audible. Uh, yeah. In yeah. The Island tour. Yeah. He's, he's way more, um, yeah, his voice is like coming through more. You can hear his his interplay yeah. uh, a lot more in this jam. Uh, but I feel like when it when it breaks and it gets so beautiful, it's like uh, it's it's like you have to go through that crazy, intense, body checked, dark, mm-hmm. anxiety inducing jam to like truly appreciate that like that uh, that next beautiful moment that that they're presenting, and it's just right. like. It's like you have to you have to go through that and get to the other side to realize like whoa like just the power of it I guess you know yeah hundred percent hundred percent it's it's so cool and also a weird Frankie says quote from Fish in like the last ten seconds of the jam like yeah <laughs> and it's not like they go into Frankie says or anything like it's just it's just there yeah <laughs> for no yeah. for no like, apparent like, reason <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is so, which is so weird. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so cool to look at the, the the differences between the two. Like not only in you know, because you, you can compare the two tension builds um, mm-hmm. in this jam. You know, the first part of the Orlando stash and the the first part of this Island Tour one, um, and they're kind of similar. But I feel like there's there's a there's more of a patience to the build in the '98 one. You know, like the the Orlando one in the first part hits a peak like three or four times in the first 15 minutes. Yeah. And in, and in the Island tour one Trey just builds and builds and builds and builds without hitting the peak for like five full minutes without it. And so that, that again, that also speaks to the differences in the jam, you know, fall 95 was all about aggression and like yeah. pushing everything. And then by the beginning of 98, you know, they've already gone through obviously the funk of 97 and they're looking to where do we go next? And so the, the patience is there. Yeah, totally. cool. that's yeah, that's a good, yeah, that's a good nugget to bring up. Um, yeah, I feel like a lot of like the early '90s fish. It was just like they're just coming out of the gates, just like ripping everything. They're like, mm-hmm. they're like let's let's kick some ass at like every moment. Um, and then '97, it's like, all right, let's like chill out and just get funky and like and like ride this thing and make it like so danceable. And then, uh, yeah, and then 98, they're like, okay, now that we have all this in our bag. Like, yeah, where do we go next? <laughs> yeah, yeah, what can we do now? And, and that's like, wait, we can create these, like, serene, like, soundscapes. Like, mm-hmm. you know, that's like another, like, tool in their bag now. Yeah, well, you, you hear it all over the, like, the, the Gorge 98 release that they just put mm-hmm. out. Like, so good. Yeah. Like the, the 2001 <laughs> from, from that, like, the gumbo and the stuff, like, where they just get so far out there in space yeah um yeah i, I love summer 98 that yeah. stuff is amazing amazing so Definitely. the question for you unrelated to this but oh, yeah. related to playing with neil mm-hmm. um i know you guys do jam from time to time not not always it's not super frequent but i know it does happen uh-huh um <laughs> how do you guys do like do you guys decide before the show like okay tonight we're gonna jam prometheus or is it like a in the moment you're kind of like ah fuck it let's you know uh a little bit of both Mm -hmm. uh kind of depends on 
kind of depends on like how we're feeling that day. You know, like there's some shows where we might be like a little tired from traveling that day and stuff. And, uh, you know, we want to play it like a little bit safer just cause like, you know, maybe you're at, but then right. at the same time, there's some days that we're tired from traveling and, and, like, and we're like, yeah. let's go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, it's, it's talked about sometimes and sometimes it happens organically in a couple of our songs. We have, uh, these, these like spaces, um, you know, like a long, so like Prometheus or sentimental garbage or, or bunny love, like there's long solos that, uh, they'll take on different things throughout the night. And we've come up with different live arrangements, uh, than the record to kind of like, you know, give us some goalposts to get, mm-hmm. to get to. Um, and that's kind of how I like to look at it. Uh, it's just like, all right, we're going to start here. And then here's our goalpost, but you know, we can take any of these trails to get there. Right. Um, but, uh, there was like a really funny night in Seattle. We had, I forget the name of this club, but, uh, we had three shows in Seattle get, uh, get canceled, like due, wow. to, co- due to COVID, right. due to some, uh, I think it was mostly COVID, but we finally made it there. And since the first show got canceled, there was a guy on Twitter. Yeah, I know him, Skoy. <laughs> you know Skoy? Oh my God. I know God. him well. Yes. Legend. <laughs> Legend. He was just tweeting us like every day, like, <laughs> I, I, need a, I need a 20 minute Prometheus in, in Seattle. I Like every day, like, give me the 20 minute. 20 minute Prometheus and uh yeah so we were like going up to the show and like our manager's like hey like look it, this guy's been persistent it's been every day <laughs> gotta give it to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm down I'm like let's yeah let's send it let's you know let's and before the show they're like all right should we do it like what are we gonna do and I'm like oh right, let's just let's try it out so I didn't even put Prometheus in like the actual set list yeah and then usually we do like a two song encore or whatever. So we, we played the set down and then I put Prometheus at the end. And, uh, and like before we played, I was like, guys, just like, keep going, like listen to each other. Like yeah. we got this, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so like we go out and we start playing and kind of the jam opens up and we like bring it down and, you know, maybe like five minutes into like the jam when, when the crowd's realizing it's still going, I see one guy in the crowd just, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, it was you. It was you. Yeah. Uh, so I I don't know if we hit 20 minutes, but we hit probably like 15 or 16, which is, mm-hmm. uh, which is long for us. And it was a blast. It was super fun. And I think, I think that sort of moment kind of like um, made it known to like the band that like, Hey, we're like, we're able to like yeah we could be a jam band if we yeah want. like like <laughs> like we're able to to stretch some stuff out and mm-hmm. it's made way for some really fun uh moments since then and you know some nights it's like we're all just feeling it the crowd's feeling it it feels right to just like keep going mm-hmm. on this section and uh it's been a cool thing to you know have have available in the band but yeah uh it's also you know i have i'm also a big fan of neil's songs and like some of them don't need to like stretch on forever of course but, yeah but then some of them very much lend themselves to it and, mm-hmm. uh yeah yeah it's, it's really cool um you know I, i've seen you guys twice now um once when you were opening for marcus king and then you know just last month uh you know at, at the velvet underground in toronto which was mm-hmm. so much fun it's um it's a fun show that was a good one. I, I so I've I've gotten like a little bit of a taste of the jamming, um, but like I I honestly I think you jammed for longer uh, in the Marcus King opening set than you did um, at the headlining show, which oh, is kind of funny. There was one I I don't remember what song it was. It may have been Prometheus um, that you kind of took out for like a a, a few minutes um, when you guys were opening for Marcus, and I just remember like being struck by like man like the like these guys sound really good when they're improvising. So like, I'm oh, maybe nice. I'll tweet at you every day until the next time I see you to try to get <laughs> you to play a 20 minute, anything. 
<laughs> maybe maybe that's the uh yeah maybe that's that's the formula there but mm -hmm. i'm uh, i'm i mean i'm super down uh to jam everything yeah. even before neil i was in uh my friend pat's band cycles from from denver and that oh, was yeah. just that was just like a power trio and we would just like we'd get up on stage and play for like three hours and, mm -hmm. and not stop and just weave songs in and uh and so I, i've heard of cycles before i think like goose played with them a yeah, few times in yeah. the early days. So did you play with those guys? Uh, I played Beanstalk Festival in yeah. 2019 that Goose was on. And Goose, like, I think they had a main stage set, but they were doing all, like, the, like, in-between sets mm -hmm. uh, in, like, a in like a small tent. So I've, I met them there, like, great dudes. And then Cycles was playing in Hartford, Connecticut, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ben Atkin uh, came out to the show because I had just joined the band and... Uh, you know, they had, they knew Pat and Tucker and had played with cycles before, but it was really sweet. He came out to the show and afterwards, like, he was like, ah, I heard cycles got a new drummer. Like, I, like, I really wanted to meet you. And That's it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's just such a nice dude. And we've yeah. kept in touch since. And I'm, I'm just like, I, we talked about it at uh velvet underground, mm -hmm. but I am like, like so happy to see goose just like, just killing it. Mm -hmm. And like, watching um uh, watching like the first trace it in like that video like it just brought tears to my eyes i was like that's just like, same here man i was same just like here. i was like <laughs> that is just so sweet and like what a dream come true and like yeah couldn't mm -hmm. be happier for them now guys. you did you got to play the salt shed uh before they do so oh yeah <laughs> you got you guys just uh like opened up the venue right yeah we did uh it wasn't like the, the first official show right but there was like the sort of like opening party for like friends and family uh and they asked us to do it with our friend daniel uh Villarreal, who's like an amazing uh drummer from panama mm -hmm. uh it was cool yeah it was it was wild being like the first band to play at a venue Mm -hmm. and i mean technically daniel was the first band he, he played first. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the first night it's you know yeah yeah we 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 were the first bands but uh who sound checked first oh we did oh there you go yeah i guess, <laughs> I guess you're right yeah um but it, yeah it was wild like we we were loading in and uh they were still like putting like the they were still like putting the emergency exit doors <laughs> on the room and there was like forklifts everywhere we walked in we were like whoa, am I going to be ready tonight? And yeah. They pulled it off, but uh, super sick venue. Like, like if you get a chance, go see a show there. I think mm -hmm. we're going to be in town for the King Giz run. Oh, um, nice. They're doing three nights there, and it's pretty sweet. I mean, it's mm -hmm. this big, it's this big warehouse. Like, it's all like a pitched roof, um, just a gigantic space. And, like, they, they did a wonderful job um, designing and building it. Awesome. Well, they, it, it seems like a cool one. Uh, are you are you there when when Goose hits it in April? Or are you out on tour? I think we're out on tour. I checked. Oh. Yeah, it's uh, I know <laughs> it's tough, but <laughs> but we are doing um the Days Between Festival and oh in New Orleans uh, with Goose, and I'm I'm super excited for that. Yeah, I'm I'm doing a bunch of West Coast dates like the week before uh, for Goose, and I was like maybe I just go to new orleans hey, <laughs> like pop on down <laughs> yeah i it's 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 a dream and we'll see what happens um so yeah so back to the the in, improvising thing so I'm, I'm curious to hear more about you know you guys and the other guys um in in neil's band like i know at least when you know when i spoke to you guys last month like you're the only one with a real heavy jam background um out of the a four of you right actually <laughs> so oh. Uh, so Mike, our bass player, mm -hmm. um, is like, like in high school and stuff, he'd, he'd see a bunch of fish. He's, he's definitely okay. a fan. And, uh, and Kellen, our guitar player has seen a bunch of fish as well. Uh, I think in recent years, he, he's more focused on, on other music, but like, of course, you know, yeah. they, they all still appreciate. We actually all brought Neil to his first show. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it was a, it was a great uh collective effort from our managers and business managers i love it and like <laughs> and our friends but uh yeah we had a we had a day off um up on the east coast and we we we, we all went to like the first night at jones beach 
Mm -hmm. uh, which was a blast. We had so much Great fun. Show. It was it was like awesome for Neil to be in that environment and like see it because uh, we have a lot of fan uh, fans of fish who come out to our shows. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it gave him like a more well rounded um, view of did, like did they did they play you guys for pre show music at that one? They actually didn't. They they played us uh, night two and oh. we we were gigging in like Washington D.C. that <laughs> night, but. Uh, <laughs> But no, I, I feel so grateful and we, we all feel so grateful that like um, we've been on their like pre-show, set break, post-show playlist. And, um, you know, I've had friends like send me videos from like Mexico mm -hmm. or, uh, it's like, yeah, you know, it's you. They're, like, they're <laughs> like, hey, they're playing you. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> never in my wildest dreams. Um, mm. But yeah, uh, so yeah, Mike's Mike's definitely uh a fan and, mm -hmm. and knows uh knows his fish well yeah Ke kellen uh went to some shows in high school and uh you know also knows his fish kellen will like he'll tease it's ice a lot Ooh. Uh, in uh in jams he'll just like he'll just throw like one line in and like i always catch it <laughs> I'm like nice. hey nice well I, i'm gonna have to listen more closely next time i see you guys for that yeah yeah it's like my be... like my favorite thing like picking up on teases yeah there might be a little nugget in there for you yeah um, i i saw um like the there's this really good fish cover band in toronto um and i saw their keyboardist play with his like jazz trio last week and the whole time like he knew i was there and the whole time he was throwing fish teases into nice. all the songs like <laughs> nice <laughs> it's, it's always it's always fun to do that yeah it's um super fun. so i was gonna ask when, when you guys are improvising because like, I, I guess Three of you do come from a, a you have a jammy background, um, but Neil obviously doesn't as much. Um, when you're improvising, do you guys have you guys like ever done like exercises on your own to work on jams? Do you have like hand signals or anything like that, or do you just kind of go with the flow? Uh, I'd say it's more go with the flow. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're not like you know we don't have any cool signals right. to each other. <laughs> Aside from like looking over and like um, eye contact with us is like is pretty good. That yeah. we don't. That doesn't mean we have to like look at each other like the whole time. Mm -hmm. But um, I think we all we all like have a really good trust um, between us, and we we do have a chemistry, and we've uh, spent a lot of time, you know, in the studio and on stage and. Uh, trying different things. So I, I think there is, there, there's like a level of trust where, um, when things open up, you know, we can kind of like just try to be present and, uh, and play off one another. And then like, you know, if Neil's like playing, he like looks over and gives me a look, I'm like, okay, goalpost coming up. Like, right. We, like everyone kind of like, all right. And then this part, and then we kind of like go do our thing. And, um, you know, there's, more like visual signaling uh mm. or you know if kellen's in a like ripping guitar solo and he's like you know finishing up you know what he's trying to say and stuff right he'll like, look he'll either look or like he'll just like kind of bring back in a theme from like the song yeah and that kind of like like we're all listening we're like okay cool like that's wrapping up let's let's like build it up or like do what we have to do to like cap off that part um uh but i'd say a lot of a lot of the times things just uh cool I'm moments full. in the jam yeah 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 or like um even like some of like the newer live arrangements that we've put in the songs from in plain sight and and changes um those have all kind of come from just riffing on it jamming at like sound check and then we're like whoa like that was pretty cool let's do that and then mm -hmm. we kind of like build a section around it and then like and put it in um uh, you know put it into the to the set uh neil's been very uh receptive of um of ideas coming from all of us uh i get the question a lot like you know you're in the band neil francis is it like you know do you feel like you're a part of it or do you feel like you're just playing behind this guy? And the answer is, I feel like so, so much a part of it. Like he, 
Um, he writes amazing songs. I feel very fortunate to be in this band and playing this music that I really care about. Um, but he's also um, given me the the opportunity to like I've like all last year I wrote all the set lists and I had like free reign to write the set list and mix them up every night or that's awesome. Yeah. So I'd, I'd write set lists out. I'd be like, man, it'd be cool if we played uh, changes, but then just went like straight into she's a winner, you know, like no, like how do we bridge that gap? Uh, I think, so, I think you did that when I saw you. We did. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's kind of part of the set now. Mm -hmm. um, and we also got put in some situations. Uh, we did a tour with Amos Lee where it was like a month of just like 30 minute sets, um, which is a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, if we like play these full songs and then stop and talk or whatever, like we're going to play like four or five songs, like, right. you know, it's not going to be that much. Uh, so I put together, I put together a set list of like, the songs that we wanted to play that we wanted to like display to these fans um and you know to to amos's fans and like what we wanted to play for for the tour and Callan and i worked together to transition all of them so that's so cool so, so it was like a suite <laughs> yeah it was like 30 minutes like no stopping like we're playing we're playing seven songs mm -hmm. um so getting getting put into scenarios like that has has really helped us to kind of like I guess open up the uh, open up the walls of each song, being like, okay, like, like we can we can augment things and kind of like puzzle piece them together better. And like, hey, maybe if we just stretch this part out and then turn it in to like the beginning of this song, you know. Uh, and those are all elements of of improvising that have always been very interesting to me. Um, especially with fish, like their ability to just weave, you know, in and out of songs. It mm -hmm. keeps the, it's exciting for the crowd. It's really fun for the band. Like, um, yeah. It's well, yeah, and you hear that tying it back to the stash. Yeah. <laughs> you hear yeah. that in the Orlando stash, you know, they, they weave in and out of stash for 40 minutes pretty much. Yeah. And yeah, it, it's, it's stuff like that being able to, you know, just work together as a group like that. And that's so cool to hear that you guys just kind of like, do it on the fly you know you haven't like because fish also you know that when they were just starting out they'd spend like two days locked in a garage like just playing yeah right and so you guys are kind of taking a similar approach but just kind of on stage and obviously you're you're jamming less uh than fish does but you're just kind of like we'll do it you know so I, like is this something like are you guys experimenting with extended jams more now or is it still kind of like a a couple of times a tour um that's a good question. I think, I think, um, I think in the set uh, that we're playing right now, mm -hmm. uh, there's like there's pockets where there's there's pockets where we do get to like just open up and mm -hmm. you know I'm not like none of us are playing anything scripted, but we're all we're all like playing this part and the way we build is different every night. The way we right. play those sections is different every night. So they're uh i'd say yeah it's like definitely a part of what we're doing now um it's just like not uh in some of the songs it's not like the immediate focus but some of the songs really lend themselves to it and i think moving forward i mean just like just like fish moving from 94 or 95 through you know, up to, up to 98, where your mm -hmm. stash was from, it's like, they have all these, uh, they have all these tools in the, in their bag now that they yeah. can, that they can choose from. Yes, exactly. Well, and, and speaking of, you know, stashes, there was a really like good one just played a few days ago in Mexico, oh, nice. um, which is like, you know, obviously completely different from either of these versions. Um, because obviously it doesn't have that fierce 1.0 tension release, but it's got this like weird unsettling thing about it still that's different. You know, it's these weird synthy tones that they've got uh, yeah. everywhere now. And, and what's interesting about this one too, is that it did kind of like what these do where, where they kind of go somewhere and then they return to stash and then they venture out again. Um, and that's not something they've done. Like, you know, they've been stretching out stash a lot more in the last few years, mm -hmm. but this one from Friday night in Mexico, it um, like they, they returned to the stash theme and then, 
Trey was like, ah, let's keep going. And then, you know, took them out on this other direction. So it's, it's interesting to hear how they keep um, doing new things with songs like that. But also there are similarities throughout their career. I find it's, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. That's awesome. And okay. One last question for you, just cause I, yeah, I'm yeah. curious. What's your favorite Neil Francis song to play? Oh man. Ooh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a tough one. I know. It is. Uh, we can do a top three if that's yeah. easier. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it it kind of depends on the night. Mm-hmm. I I have so much fun playing Bunny Love because it's just, it's just like it's just a funk banger, and uh, the whole end section of it is just like it's just party time. You know, we're just like, all right, like the singing is done. Like, we're just like, let's get this room just like moving. Yeah. And that feels really good. Um, I think probably for me, probably Sentimental Garbage, Mm -hmm. um, which I think we encored with at the Velvet Underground show. Yeah. Um, But it gets really like Pink Floydy. There's like a, there's kind of like a spacey section, uh, like after, um, yeah kind of like second chorus leads into this like build up like space section and then it completely breaks down and then uh it kind of like builds up with like the drums and Neil's on synth doing like a bass line and then it kind of like descends into this like very like kind of like fast intense uh uh jam that's like maybe re- reminiscent of of Floyd or like the who yeah uh or like or maybe even Zeppelin I don't know and it, it builds up into like kind of like a drum break it's like this very exciting part uh for me <laughs> and yeah uh, <laughs> and uh you know after the drum break or you know I, I get to do some some big fills it's fun uh <laughs> That's right, awesome. right after that it just slams into like Kellen just like ripping the guitar and like he just He's so incredible. It's just yeah. like, it's like the end of the show. We can just put like everything into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm playing as hard as I possibly can. I'm like astounded at what Kellen's playing every night. Like he is, he's just a total ripper. And mm-hmm. uh, that whole section came about, we were playing a show in Maine at, I think we were at Sugarloaf Mountain in Maine. And it was this like, mountain biking festival competition going on and uh the stage was like up on the ski hill and it was just looking over like this beautiful landscape and like we're, we're sound checking and the sun setting it was just it was this like serene uh place that we were in and we were just sound checking and we played sentimental garbage and then like it ended but we just like kept playing it mm-hmm. and just like that whole section that's now in the set uh, just came from that moment of like all of us kind of like letting our guard down and just, just like moving with it. Um, so that's awesome. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Well, your, your excitement and everything is very palpable from the audience. You know, I can always tell like you guys are just having a blast on stage always. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's it for this episode. Well, thank you so much, uh, Colin, for being on today. I really, really appreciate, uh, it. And I'm, I'm very happy we got to, uh, discuss this soon. I know, um, a little bit of a teaser for everyone out there. Um, eventually Neil will be on the podcast as well, um, which would be very exciting. I've chatted with him about that a little bit, but yeah, this is, this has been a lot of fun. Thanks. Yeah, Ryan. Thank you. It's been a, it's been a blast. It's my pleasure. And everybody, uh, make sure um, you stay up to date on everything that's happening over at Storm Sound. Um, At the time of this episode releasing, um, we will have announced our brand new Snarky Puppy podcast that will be debuting at the end of March called Things of Gold. Check that out if you are into that sort of thing. And even if you're not, it's awesome. It's going to be fun. Goose Tour uh, is starting. Always Almost There will be in full swing. Uh, We will have our Capitol Theater run recap up soon, um, depending on when this episode comes out and when we actually record that. But join us the day after every Goose show at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern live to recap it. And that is it. Thank you again, Colin. Uh, Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Hope you have a fantastic day. 
and we'll see you next time.